All right, guys, I'm out here at uh, Carefree of Colorado. These guys are kind enough to uh, help me explain to you how to do some adjustments on these awnings. So uh, if you guys have an awning that's just not as perfect as mine is right now, fortunately, mine's working very well. I've been very satisfied with my awning, but I know there's been a lot of questions that have come up and uh, how we can make some of the simple adjustments. So here we go. Can you introduce yourselves and Take it away. Hello, uh, I'm David McMillan. I'm the director of engineering here at Carefree of Colorado. Uh, this is Michael Ebert. He's our um, engineering technician. And we're just going to kind of introduce you to the awning and go through some of the adjustments for uh, pitch. Um, if the canopy isn't closing quite correctly, how to shim the canopy, just a few things like that, things to help uh, make the awning work better. All right. All right. So first thing, uh, pitch adjustment. We have a four millimeter Allen wrench. Um, or, you know, you probably just have a metric multi-tool. Um, bottom was the set screw, right? Uh, top one is the lock. Top is the lock. So this, this top set screw here, we're gonna loosen that. And now when we adjust the bottom set screw, the bottom set screw is actually what's pushing this knuckle around. Um, this is how we're gonna adjust the pitch. So again, this, this set screw going in and out, that's just gonna raise or lower this casting and allow us to come in and out where the, the top set screw is just, it's just the locking mechanism to secure it in place. So we're gonna bump this loose. Um, you, like right now we have the awning extended like two feet. Um, this is kind of the easiest way to make these adjustments. You'll have the leverage on it. Um, but once you go up or down on this, uh, you're, you're taking pressure off the lead rail. That way the casting can actually move up and down because it's gonna pivot around here. Um, and you don't necessarily need to do both sides. If you got one side that's low, yeah, you just can adjust that one, right? Correct. Okay. So up or down, again, you're just gonna raise the individual height of this arm. Um, what we are finding to get this awning to close more ideally, if it's super flat, your lead rail is gonna stick out a little bit. Um, so if you pitch downward, you're gonna have you're gonna have less wind catch underneath the awning, but you're also gonna the awning's gonna close up and have a little bit nicer finish. We can actually show that uh, at the end of the video here, we're gonna close it up. Um, another thing to check while you're adjusting the pitch here, um, this, is a, this is a 17 millimeter bolt. And these like to just kind of wiggle loose over time or just kind of as the awning wears in. And especially as you're driving down the road, you get more miles. Um, this kind of just walks itself loose. So all we're doing is um, you'll actually you'll know you'll want to adjust this because this elbow can actually hang low. So if you lift up the elbow and then we've already tightened it, but um, you're just going to tighten this, make sure it's as tight as it can go. And that's going to keep the elbow from sagging. So that's, that's just another fix. That's going to prevent you from having some trouble closing, some trouble opening um, between that. And then just adjusting the pitch, the pitch adjust is probably the most common fix you're going to want to make uh, just between the dealer. Um, sometimes these just don't come in level. Sometimes they're just level to a parking lot or sometimes they're pitched on purpose, which you, you may or may not want. But uh, so today we just pitched this awning to level it out. Nice. And then I think, is it just the awning, the yeah. shim that yep. we want to look at too? Correct. Yeah. So the, okay. the last thing that we're going to uh, kind of describe is if your awning is coming in and one side is closing up tight and the other side is still sticking out a little bit, um, that means that the, the canopy isn't quite rolling up square. And so in order to kind of counteract that and correct it, what you want to do is you'll extend the awning all the way. Um, we usually recommend and use adhesive backed Velcro, the soft fuzzy side. If you cut a, a one inch by one inch square piece, you can then stick it underneath the canopy on whichever side is not closing fully. So what that does is that increases the diameter that gets rolled up so that side will close a little bit faster and that'll even it out as it comes in fully closed. Perfect. So yeah, so where, where you're looking right now, um, we would pull down on this canopy and stick that Velcro onto the aluminum roll bar underneath the fabric. Got it. And a one inch by one inch piece of that Velcro is going to suck in that end by about a quarter of an inch. Interesting. All um, right. Yeah. 
to stick that Velcro on, the process typically you'll take that end cap off and you'll make adjustments to overextend the motor. Um, the service manual will tell you how to do that. Yep. So you'll want to you'll want to follow that really carefully because if you just stick the Velcro to the canopy itself, you're gonna you're gonna cause binding problems. Um, so you'll you'll create a lot more issues. So the the most important thing here is you're extending the canopy until you see uh, Rob aluminum roll bar, like he said. Okay, but, and the Velcro goes on that aluminum ro roll yep. bar. Yes, on the aluminum roll bar underneath okay. the edge of the fabric. Yep. All right. So this end cap comes off with two screws. And then it's the same four millimeter Allen wrench is, is to adjust the motor. Uh, the service manual will walk you through how to adjust that motor, but you, what you need is the canopy to overextend a little bit so you can get to that bare aluminum. All right, very good. Yep. So um, one last question I got for you. Yep. Um, I see that there's these bumpers up there. Yep. Um, and it's my understanding that those things can, can move around a bit. Um, where should they be positioned and how to adjust them? Maybe you can hop up on the ladder and Let's yeah, talk yeah. about that for real quick. All right, so these aluminum, or not aluminum, these rubber bumpers, um, they just pop into place here so they can walk around. Um, David looked up the spec, it's supposed to be about 12 inches from the end here. Uh, if you want it to stick permanently, you could probably just take some that same piece of Velcro and stick it here on both sides and prevent it from walking around. Okay. But I mean, truly we're just, you know, quick fix. You could just slide this around. It's, it's, it's gonna stay there. Again, maybe your, your long-term road miles are gonna make it vibrate around a little bit, but um, these bumpers do help, get, they just help you get the first two inches of the awning open. So if somebody's having problems where, cause I've heard and seen a number of comments where the only way that they can get their awning to extend is by giving a nice firm slap. Yep. Yeah, is it most, likely most likely those bumpers were either set or drifted towards the center. Okay. Yep. And um, you know, some people understood it as those should be 12 inches from the elbow. So way over here, ah. instead of 12 inches from the case connector. So what those are actually doing is they're actually, as the arm comes in, they're causing that aluminum to flex. And so then when you hit extend, that aluminum is acting as a spring. Oh, that makes the, sense. The aluminum of the arm. So it springs the awning open those two inches. And then from there, the springs inside the arms can take it and extend it the rest of the way. Okay, so now let's talk. We've talked about some of the mechanical adjustments. Let's talk about electronics and some of the, uh, some of the issues there, so. What do we got? All right, so we're gonna open up the Carefree app and we're gonna connect to his awning. Um, we've paired this on, we've paired the motion sensor already, but we're gonna just talk through it because we have a lot of, occasionally we have motion sensors disconnect. So here we're just gonna show extend retract. So up in the settings here, um, we're gonna go to page two. Right now we have a green dot that indicates the, the motion sensor is paired. Uh, if you see a red dot here, or sometimes you won't even see anything at all on this page, that means that you don't have a motion sensor um, or your batteries are dead. A um, couple different things that can happen. Sometimes the dealer itself the, themselves will take away the motion sensor to remedy this issue. So if you, if the motion sensor battery dies, a lot of you probably will hear this. The awning starts to beep at you and it's beeping to call for help. It's telling you, I, you don't have wind prote protection. We want the awning to be able to protect itself and close when it starts to get windy. So the, mo the motor itself uh, is gonna beep and it's just, it's just crying for help saying, we don't have a motion sensor. And again, some of the dealers, they'll just wipe it so that they can move on. But you'll want your motion sensor to work. Um, so we got these two screws here are just gonna pull this down Super quick and easy. That's uh, a number one Phillips. Yeah, this this is a number two, but then when you get to the case itself, that's a number one. I got it. So that's four number one screws is gonna take the cover off and then you'll replace the batteries. Uh, let's in here. Okay, we're gonna walk through how to put this into pairing mode. Okay. So a little bit of the logic. If your motion sensor is missing for, for more than five minutes, um, the awning is either willing to accept a new motion sensor or it'll pair back to the same one if you replace the batteries. So whether or not you order a replacement or just replace the batteries, we'll get to that. So the two things we need to do, we need to put the motion sensor in pairing mode and then the awning itself in, into pairing mode. So we're actually, I'll show you the switch here. So we are gonna close the awning 
until it stalls. And we're, we're gonna use this switch here. I can show you this as an example too. So I'm gonna remove this awning. I have no awnings here, and we're just gonna use that to demonstrate how we go into pairing mode here. So in a second here, we're fully closed. Okay, now that the awning is stalled, we're gonna, we're gonna push uh, retract again, and we're gonna hold it for three seconds. Sometimes you have to double click it. There we go. We hit rescan and then this, this carefree awning showed up. Now we're paired to it. Um, on the same token, the awning itself is in pairing mode. So it's ready to pair to the motion sensor. Now for the motion sensor itself to go into pairing mode, we need to remove the batteries or replace the batteries from the motion sensor itself. The motion sensor doesn't have any switches. It doesn't have any other way to transmit and indicate that it needs to go into pairing mode. So once you just remove and reinstall the battery, the motion sensor is in pairing mode. So now that we have used the switch to put the awning in pairing mode and install the battery into the motion sensor to put that into pairing mode, now we can pair everything up. Uh, if this, this should work and give it like a couple minutes to appear. Again, on, on this page here, you should see this uh, green light come back on. Um, sometimes you'll see it red for a minute and then green will come on. It, sometimes it just takes a, takes it a minute for that to appear. Um, I'll walk you through this last scenario. It's, it's a little bit, this is kind of a last resort measure. Um, we're gonna hit awning in. And then when you hold it, you're gonna hold the in limit. You're gonna hold awning in for 10 seconds. And what 10 seconds does, that will take the carefree Bluetooth module and that will reset everything to defaults. So it's gonna delete all the peripherals. It's gonna delete the motion sensor and it's gonna reset all of the extender track settings to default. So once it turns on again, it's gonna, it's gonna have to relearn all of its settings. Um, by default, it'll do, it should load up everything the way it's supposed to. But what it does is whether or not you're having issues with this motion sensor, it's now cleared and it's with a fresh slate. Uh, the awning also, also is in pairing mode after holding for 10 seconds. So you don't have to do the three seconds to go back into pairing mode. But again, that, that is your factory reset for the module to, I can't go into pairing mode. I can't go into pairing mode. I can't get this to pair up. That's gonna be your fix. And if, if you can't get the motion sensor to pair at that point, I recommend replacing the motion sensor itself. The module you won't need to replace unless it's very clearly just doesn't turn on if you have a wiring issue, but the, the pairing issue itself, if you, can't, if you can't factory reset the awning to defaults and then get a motion sensor to pair, then you need a new motion sensor. Is at the, that's, that's gonna be the end of the day. Huh, so, interesting. Yeah, again, there's, there's just a number of those in the field that you'll wanna repair. So. Right on. Yeah. Okay, well, that's very helpful. Um, guys, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment in the video or comment on the on the page here, and uh, I'll do my best to get those questions answered. I have these guys' direct contact information, and uh, we'll be able to help you out. So thank you for taking the time and helping us, Jayco Terrain and Integra Launch Owners. You've been a big help. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, take care, everybody.